Anti-lockdown protests across Europe turn violent in the Netherlands. New Covid restrictions sparked a riot. Two people were shot by police. Also, as dozens more migrants cross the Channel, the Home Secretary plans stricter rules for new arrivals. And... And England's future, Marcus Smith. It's sweet revenge for England in the rugby as they repay their World Cup loss to South Africa. This is ITV News with Kylie Pentelow. Good evening. Resistance turned into riots in one European city as protesters across the continent vented their anger at new stringent anti-COVID measures. Dutch police opened fire and used water cannon in Rotterdam. Austria, where infections are amongst the highest in the EU, also witnessed angry protests. The new COVID crackdown comes amid growing fears of another deadly wave of infections there, but one that scientists here seem to be less worried about. Sergio Carrier reports. <laughs> This is one of the worst outbreaks of violence in the Netherlands during the pandemic. New restrictions not just prompting resistance, but palpable anger, spilling out on the streets of Rotterdam. With rioters setting off fireworks and flares, and throwing rocks and missiles at police officers. Several people were hurt, 20 were arrested. The mayor of the city condemned the violence, saying on several occasions police had to draw their weapons to defend themselves. With a record number of COVID cases and a new partial lockdown in force, Europe is once again at the epicentre of the pandemic. This evening in Austria, tensions were running high as people took to the streets of Vienna protesting against the full lockdown coming in on Monday and plans to make vaccines compulsory. The country has one of the highest infection rates in Europe. Neighbouring Czech Republic has recorded its worst COVID count since the pandemic began. The majority of hospital patients are unvaccinated and less than two thirds of people have been inoculated, unlike the UK. I'm not anticipating any explosive increase in cases of the kind we've recently seen in Austria and elsewhere in Eastern Europe. In many ways, we are further ahead than those countries in the course of our epidemic. We both relaxed our measures earlier, we started our immunization program earlier, and we've also, crucially, experienced a wave of Delta variant virus earlier. But as unrest towards new restrictions grows in the rest of Europe, the World Health Organization says urgent action is needed now to avoid hundreds of thousands of deaths. Sergio Carrier, ITV News. The so far unsolvable problem of migrants risking the busy channel in small boats continued unabated today. Despite misty conditions adding to the danger, dozens came ashore from Dover to Dungeness. The government wants desperately to stem the tide and has been floating new ideas. The latest involves copying stricter asylum rules from Greece, despite warnings that even in Greece they don't work as well as hoped. Juliet Bremner reports from Dover. Saved from a cold, misty English channel, another group of migrants helped onto the beach at Dungeness today. Around 40 people rescued after the Coast Guard responded to a mayday call. Amongst them, women and children, adding to an influx of almost 25,000 who've already arrived this year. I think next year, you could be looking at over 100,000. I have been saying for a year that we have to make the UK less attractive. Therefore, an off-seas reception centre, I think, is really the only answer. Despite deals with the French, pictures filmed by ITV News this week show the migrants still cramming onto boats, leaving the Home Secretary searching for an alternative deterrent. She's understood to be interested in building secure migrant centres like those in Greece to deal with the thousands making this crossing. The Greek model, as it says, um, is not on its face a good model to follow, given that 
we know that there have been huge delays for many years for people trying to either get into the Greek asylum system or get decisions out of that system. But their steps into a new country are not universally welcomed. With the number of migrants arriving here at Dover and along the south coast still rising, the Prime Minister is said to be exasperated. He's demanding that all government departments concentrate on bringing these channel crossings to an end. Today, the reward of reaching British beaches clearly outweighed the risks, resulting in a seemingly endless stream of migrants. Juliet Bremner, ITV News, Dover. The head of the Women's Tennis Association says a new video appearing to show the missing Chinese player Peng Shui does not prove she's safe. The former Wimbledon doubles champion is seen smiling in a white jumper in the new images released by China's state media. But concerns for her welfare remain as she hasn't appeared in public since she accused a former Chinese government official of sexual assault. In America, protests have remained largely peaceful since Carl Rittenhouse was found not guilty of murder yesterday. He's the teenager who shot dead two men during anti-racism protests in Wisconsin last year. Rittenhouse has spoken of his relief. The jury reached the correct verdict. Self-defense is not illegal. And here the government has announced a consultation on banning single-use plastics in England. It could mean the end of plastic plates, cutlery and polystyrene cups. Scotland has already announced a ban on most single-use plastics from next June. And finally, the home nations triumphed in the Rugby Autumn Internationals today. Scotland over Japan, Wales over Australia in the final seconds. And England's match with world champion South Africa was only settled at the very end as well. But at the whistle, there was revenge for England's defeat in the World Cup final. Chris Scudder was watching. This was personal for England, the first meeting of these two heavyweights since the World Cup final two years ago. Revenge in the air, and they made the perfect start. England's bright young things battered away, a new fullback sensation, Freddie Stewart, scored a second try. The world champion's big men tried to knock England out of their stride. They edged in front with the boot, but then this. England's young guard combined for a fabulous try from replacement scrum half Rafi Quirk. It wasn't over. South Africa scored their only try to cut the gap to a point. And as England conceded too many penalties, they fell behind with minutes to go. But in a dramatic finish, they got a penalty of their own and young fly half Marcus Smith did the rest. Victory over the world champions by a single point. Chris Scudder, ITV News. That's it. The weather forecast is coming up next. But from all of us here on the weekend team, have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.